Hey, what is up, and y'all? Barbrock here. I bring you the Lightning Death Knight build in Elden Ring DLC with one of the most exciting and powerful new weapons, the Death Knight Long Half Axe. Play wearing an awesome drip while wielding the power of a lightning god. This strength faith build has great power, speed, stance damage, long reach, and a new and awesome lightning weapon ability that will transform you into a bolt of lightning to close the gap between enemies in a blink of an eye and makes you untouchable while doing great amount of damage. It sounds really good to be true and it really is. So stick around and see how this build works and everything you need to make it. Game on! This Lightning Death Knight build is really versatile for all combat and defensive situations, relying on your new Ash of War ability to charge enemies and do great damage with its follow-up attack, but also avoiding them. That means that you are not going to spam this new Ash of War because the normal and heavy attacks of this weapon are quick, powerful, with a great reach, allowing you to hit single enemies or multiple enemies at once. And to improve even more, you can add a few incantations that will support and fill the holes of this build, like long range or AoE attacks. Let's start with the new weapon, the Death Knight Long Haft Axe. It's a new great axe that does physical and lightning damage. It can be found when you defeat Death Knight Boss, located at the Scorpion River Catacombs in Ancient Ruin of Raul. If you have this weapon already or know where it's located, please skip to the next chapter of this video. The way to get to the lower section of Ancient Ruins of Raul and then to the Scorpion River Catacombs is starting from Murth Ruins in Skadu Altus. Take this path northeast to get to this cave and continue that path west that will take you to the Ancient Ruins base site of Grace and then to Temple Town Ruins. When in Temple Town Ruins, right north and follow the river until you get to do a summer circle to the left on the map and get to the Scorpion River Catacombs at the end. This great axe at max level scales B with strength, D with faith, and E with dexterity, with very low requirements and the Ash of War called Bling Bolt Long Haft Axe that will transform you into a lightning bolt and do a frontal charge, which will do a small damage to the enemy, making you untouchable like it was a mid-roll after a quick delay in the animation. Then this is when it gets interesting. You can do a follow-up lightning leap attack that does incredible physical damage when you strike the enemy and lightning damage from a lightning ball from above. Which on further research, uh, the lightning damage from the frontal charge and the follow-up leap attack of the Ash of War scales with dexterity, which differs from fate that makes the scale of regular attacks. So it's kind of dumb in my opinion. I think that only one attribute should scale lightning, no matter the source. The rest of the armaments are a Gravel Storm Seal uh, to do our buff and lightning incantations with that big incantation scaling, and the Sacrificial Axe, which uh, makes you receive a small portion of FP back every time you or someone kills an enemy, helping to recoup some FP to keep using the Bling Ball Dash of War. The armor used in this build is the Death Knight Set 
comprised of helm, armor, gauntlets, and greaves. Again, another good looking DLC armor set with a lot of details and coolness for people that enjoy fashion souls like me. To get it, you gotta loot it from a Death Knight corpse in Dark Light Catacombs located in the southeast part of Skadu Altus. To get there from the beginning of the game, you gotta get to the Shadow Keep entrance and after defeating the Hippo boss in the Main Gate Plaza side of Grace, take the path left and follow this route until you get to a coffin. So now this coffin just took us to the ruins of Unte. Now you have to ride south downstream, hugging the walls to avoid falling. Be sure to activate the Sires of Grace on the way, and at the end of the drops, you will get to Dark Light Catacombs. Inside the catacombs, take this route to get to the corpse that has the armor set, following the flowers along the way. When you get to the first elevator, take the path right and drop when the broken railway is. So now the full set will only have 47 poise. So I changed the boots for the Radon's Grieve to get past the magic 51 number. Also, each piece of this armor will increase by 2% of all Dragon Cold incantations that I'm using in this build, so it will be a 6% increase with only 3 pieces from the set. The talisman I'm using are the Dragon Crest Great Shield Talisman that will reduce by 20% the physical damage taken. Next is the Two-Handed Sword Talisman that will increase by 15% damage from the Great Axe, the Normal and Heavy Attacks, charge heavy attacks and guard counter if you need to. If you want to get this new DLC talisman, please check out this video guide in the top right corner of the screen. Next talisman is the Lightning Scorpion Charm to increase lightning damage by 12%, increasing physical damage taken by 10%. So that's why we have the Dragon Crest talisman to mitigate this. And the last talisman is the Shard of Alexander to increase the attack power of the Wing Bolt Ash of War by 15%. For the Physique class, I'm running with the Lightning Shrouding Crack Tier to increase lightning attacks by 20% for 3 minutes. 
and stacks with the Lightning Scorpion Charm. And last is the Stone Barb Crack Tier to increase the stance damage by 30%. For incantations, I'm running with Golden Vow to get that 15% increase in damage plus the 10% all damage negation and it lasts 80 seconds. Flame Grammy Strength to increase the physical damage by 20% for 30 seconds. The new Knight's Lightning Spear that throws one Lightning Spear followed by six more, doing good amount of damage at mid to long range and very good as a fight opener. It eats a lot of FP with this build, so be mindful of that. And last is the big boy, the Ancient Dragon Lightning Strike, to use on big enemies like dragons if you need the extra damage. The strength and faith are the main stats of this build with the level 150. Uh, the class that I used was a wretch, but you can use a confessor or a prophet with a good amount of faith and strength to start with. This level 150 character has the following attributes. Vigor at 55 because the DLC enemies are tough and you need a good base health. Mine at 23, this would result in a good amount of FP points if you plan to use incantations and the Blink Ball Ash of War often. Endurance at 30 to get a good stamina pool and enough equip load to get to mid load. Strength at 55. The physical attack from the Death Knight Long Haft will come from Strength, which scales be with it. No points in Dexterity, although the lightning damage from the Ash of War scales with Dexterity, so if you have a 250 level character or more, uh, you can put points here to increase that damage. Also be sure to meet the 10 Dexterity requirements for the Great Axe. No points in Intelligence, Faith at 36 to increase the lightning damage from the weapons in scales D with it and also to meet the requirements of the Knight's Lightning Spear. So guys, that's how you can set up a Lightning Death Knight in the DLC to play as a dead Lightning God with a very versatile and powerful build. If you run this build with the other modifications or different items to improve it, please share it down below in the comments. I would love to check them out. Also, if you have a little time, please like this video if you enjoy it so you can help the channel out and subscribe if you want to see more of my Elden Ring builds in the DLC. So keep enjoying Shadow of the Earth Tree. Uh, take care, be safe, and see you on the next one. Ciao, ciao!